Hello there and welcome to the glaciers of Alaska. This is exactly what people travel from all over the world to just gaze in wide wonder at. This is called College Fjord and there's a few things that have surprised me now that I'm here. It's not too cold. The sound of the glaciers, every so often you'll hear what's kind of like a gunshot and then you'll see the ice just smash into the water. They call that carving. And also, who knew the ice could be so blue? It's actually a, a bit of a trick of the eye. It's when the light hits the compacted ice. But anyway, enough of the lesson. All you need to do is just look at the view. Part two of our Alaska, including the Arctic Circle journey with Scenic, kicks off right here in the pristine waters of College Fjord. Now this is our final day on the wonderful Star Princess before we head to Denali National Park and then onto Fairbanks for more Alaskan adventures. College Fjord holds the world's largest collection of tide water glaciers. University professors were part of the expedition team to uncover the fjords, and as a result, most of them are named after well-known American colleges like Harvard and Yale. I know it is quite hard to peel your eyes away from these amazing views, but the Star Princess is loaded with all sorts of other features, from the sanctuary retreat area to an outdoor cinema. I love the outdoor cinema. A jam-packed activity program. And of course, endless dining options. We love that. I've got my flash clothes on tonight. There is a little bit of a dress code on board and a lot of people do like that because you do have a couple of formal nights. I always say just wear whatever you'd wear at home to a nice restaurant. But don't worry, there are plenty of casual places to dine as well. There's, there's cafes, there's pizzerias. But my favourite on board, Sabatini, Italian. And uh, I just have to say, best coffee on board. And hello, check out the dessert. also extends to the entertainment, naturally. So don't even think about sneaking off for an early night. There are talks from fascinating guest speakers at a whole range of theatre shows, including Born to Dance, a production created exclusively for Princess Cruises. But after seven, seriously wonderful nights on board, well, it is time to farewell the Star Princess and continue the land portion of Scenic's Alaska including the Arctic Circle Adventure. First stop, Alaska's Wildlife Conservation Centre, less than an hour's drive from the city of Anchorage. The main attraction, well, of course, it's the bears, and they have both black and grizzly bears here. But they also have a few animal species I have never even heard of. This is guacamole. He is, uh, this is the only uh, baby we have here t uh, this year. We call him guac for short. So you're, you're just feeding him up with um, a really nu nutritious formula? Yes, so is, uh, we have uh, lamb milk inside here well, uh, and here and uh, milk replacer as well. Okay. And so that works very well for these guys because even though they are called muskox, they're actually more closely related to goats. Who knew? Yeah. So I'm gonna kind of distract him a bit with the bottle. There's not really much in there, um, but he is all out now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gets a little pushy. He's at perfect height now. <laughs> <laughs> These animals sure do have their own unique personalities, and each one has an incredible story. This is Kit Kat, and he is one remarkable porcupine. Kit Kat arrived here with one foot caught in a trap, a bear snare, and unfortunately, they had to amputate his foot, but he's so smart, he's learned to balance himself with his tail, and he's survived here beautifully. He's very popular, Kit Kat. 
from the Wildlife Centre, we're headed for Denali National Park. And its number one attraction is, of course, its namesake mountain. And fortunately for us, today, she is out and proud. We don't normally do this, but we've pulled over to the side of the road to show you this view of Denali. Denali is so amazing because of its size. It's the biggest mountain in North America at 20,310 feet. It is so big, it stops the weather. It could be sunny everywhere else, but the clouds will stop at the mountain. They can't move past. That means it's very rare to see this view. Only one in three people apparently get to see it this clearly. They call it the 30% club. And people are pulling over to the side of the road to check it out, to take photos. It's quite a sight. We're in the club. You must be lucky. Welcome back to Scenic's Alaska Including the Arctic Circle Adventure. This amazing journey has today delivered us to the outskirts of the incredible Denali National Park, a two and a half million hectare wilderness haven. Mount McKinley Princess Wilderness Lodge is around about two hours south of the entrance and boasts some of the best views of its namesake mountain. I love to watch this show at home called Treehouse Masters. It's hosted by this wonderful guy, the master builder himself, Pete Nelson. And I watched him build this incredible treehouse in Denali State Park. So naturally, when I got here, I asked around, does anyone know about the treehouse? And I was told, not only do we know, but you are staying there. The treehouse is now a unique part of the lodge, open for what they call sappy hour. Thanks to its vast wilderness and remote location, Alaska draws in some unique characters. Today's scenic and rich experience takes us right into the home of a fascinating local family who were brought here by the lure of homesteading. Homesteading, put simply, is a lifestyle of self-sufficiency. And back in the 1960s, there were incentives of free land to entice people to homestead in Alaska. And almost all the homesteading in this area was actually done by women and children because, you know, people move out to Alaska, they think they're going to live the Alaska lifestyle, you know, no money, just live off the land, realize they need some kind of money. So most of the men end up going back into Anchorage and getting real jobs while the women and children stayed out here to meet the living requirement. I know that you've got electricity here, but do you have that at your house? No power, no water, and no neighbors. <laughs> Next on our scenic agenda is a journey through Alaska's interior. You know, you quickly realize when you come to Alaska that most of the best places to see are inaccessible by car. And that is why so many people choose to cruise. More than half the tourists that come to Alaska will cruise. But if you want to go inland, to the interior, if you want to get off the grid, you've got to go by rail. I think this is one of the best railway journeys I've ever been on. Would anyone else agree? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, there, there you go. There is simply no other way to comfortably see these areas. And with a dining car on board, bar service, non-stop narration, and a dome top roof for sightseeing, thank you very much, you can settle in and soak up the history. Rail here was built between 1914 and 1923. So just building that back then was really a feat in its own right. Through yes. all of this, right, through all this raw country here. And people don't realize how big Alaska is and how diverse it is, and just just building the railroad through it was really something. It is the first day of rain on our entire journey. The bleak weather almost adds to the experience.
after experiencing whale watching in Juneau, the sights of Glacier Bay, and catching scores of salmon in Ketchikan. You might think that Alaska will be running short on highlights by now. Well, think again. We have just arrived at one of its most loved natural attractions. Today's stop on our Alaskan adventure with Scenic. Isn't this gorgeous? Look at today's office. Now, when most people talk about seeing the Big Five, they're generally referring to going on a safari in Africa. But did you know that Alaska has her very own Big Five, and apparently you can see all of them right here in Denali National Park and Preserve. Now, I have been watching the rangers here, and they have their own little sign language for when they spot something. So, here we go. If you see a bear, you go like that, bear. This is for caribou. This is if you spot the wolf. This, can you guess? This is a moose. And my personal favorite, that is the dull sheep. I love that. That's for the horns. Denali National Park is two and a half million hectares of wildland and just one carefully constructed road within it, giving us access to some mind-blowing wildlife encounters. So what, the, what, we've got the mummy and two cubs? Yes. Um, the, they were born this year. So they were born in their dens back in June. And so now they're about eight months old and they're learning how to eat from their mom. She's teaching them everything, and she's got one eye on them at all times, doesn't oh, she? absolutely. Aren't they gorgeous? They are. We've just spotted the moose, but I'm more interested in the breed right next to me, the professional photographer. Someone's had a lot of fun at the outdoor camping store. This is the Tundra Tour, an all-day adventure. That's just one of Scenic's free choice picks for today. All included, of course, and guaranteed to be a trip highlight. Tundra just means treeless, all right? It's a, it's a Finnish word, means treeless. And so tree line here is 2,700 feet, so we're obviously above that in elevation. And here in the park, we have what you're looking at now is shrubby tundra, but then the higher up you go, you lose the shrubs and it's just grass and flowers. Don't expect animal viewings everywhere you look. I should probably say that. This isn't a zoo. It is millions of hectares of wild habitat, which makes the sightings all the more special. What, what exactly is it doing? Uh, it's feeding. I mean, this is the time of year when bears are going into what's called hyperphagia. So they're trying to eat and eat and eat as much as they can. And Before so, they hibernate. Yeah, right. yeah. So they'll eat 200,000 berries a day. How, how many? 200,000 berries a day. Um, which for them is equal to about 100,000 calories. That is amazing. So they've got to eat and eat and eat um, because once they go into their dens, they're not gonna eat for seven months. Fair enough. Travel within the park is by bus or private vehicle. And don't worry, there's lots of places to stop and viewing opportunities all along the way. So those white dots up there are the, the dull sheep. They are, they are. They kind of look like white dots with legs. It's hard to distinguish, but they're the only white dots out there. And those are dull sheep, the whole reason why we have this park. So we can now say that we've actually seen all five yeah. of, the, of the big five. We did actually see some wolves. I did need the binoculars and one darted across the road. To be as close as possible to the action, Scenic has us booked in at the Denali Princess Wilderness Lodge with the entrance to the park less than two k's from the lodge. From the wilds of Denali National Park to the magical town of North Pole, our Alaska, including the Arctic Circle adventure with Scenic, continues. So the first stop at the North Pole, well, it's got to be Santa's house, of course. I've been dreaming of Christmas time. OK, I have to try to contain myself okay. because I'm so excited to be in Santa's house. 
How did all of this come together? So, Con and Ellie Miller, my, grand, my wife's grandparents actually, they started a trading post in 1952, and Con was known as Santa Claus because he would dress up as Santa Claus and visit the local villages. And in the process of building a trading post, some of the village children drove by, called out, hello Santa Claus, are you building a house? Hence the name Santa Claus House. Santa Claus's house is not just a gift shop with thousands of Christmas decorations and keepsakes. Although, for the shopaholics like me, that certainly is a bonus. There's letters penned to Mr. Claus from children all around the world. A 50-foot tall Santa statue, and of course, the Antler Academy, where the reindeers live. Rebecca, this is the most beautiful thing, to come to Santa's house and to meet the reindeers. Yes, it's a lot of fun. This is Dancer, this oh. Donder. You got Prancer over there. All right, Rebecca, obvious question. Mm -hmm. uh, what's their flying ability like? These guys are pros, and they can make it all around the world in one night. Seriously? Yes. My son Charlie wrote this especially for Santa all the way back home in Australia. This is a big moment. Hi, Santa. Hi there, how are you doing? Very well. I brought this all the way from Australia. So this is from my son, Charlie. Do you want me to read it? Can you read it? Right Santa, up? I hope you're well. We love you and Mrs. Claus. Me too, I love her. I am seven and I love Legos and Minecraft. So cool. So cool. I get a really big, he wants a really big Minecraft Lego set. Please, he did say please. He did say please, very polite. It's impossible not to leave Santa's house and the quirky little town of North Pole with a smile on your dial. It's just a 20 minute drive from Fairbanks, Alaska's largest inland city and launching pad for many Alaskan adventures, including our scenic and rich riverboat discovery tour. As soon as you board this old paddle steamer, you will realize this is far from your average boat trip. Why do you think people love it so much? Well, you know, I think when they first get on, they think it's gonna be just, just a boat ride, but there's more than just a boat ride. You know, there's uh, airplane demonstrations, there's so much culture we're learning and so many things along the way that actually surprised. There's action aplenty, yes sirree, with attractions on both sides of the river. <laughs> so good afternoon everybody and welcome to Trailbreaker Kennel. We've got the youngest members of Trailbreaker Kennel out. We're doing a little playing with them, having fun. And frankly, it doesn't matter what the weather is. Any day you play with puppies, <laughs> hey, you're always gonna have a great day. What is this river that we're on, this area that we're going through? This right here is the Chena River, which uh, is about 85 miles long, and it'll end up going down to what we call the Tanana River. Mm -hmm. which the Tanana River flows into the Yukon River, and then the Yukon River, of course, flows into the ocean, so it's quite a river system. The tour delivers us to the Chena Indian Village and a look at what life was like in Alaska all those centuries ago. When um, Captain Jim and Mary Binkley started this, uh, operation, it was really important to them to show our visitors what native Alaskan life is really like. And so here at the China Indian Village, we've been able to recreate some of that history and culture. And I know it may not look like much, but after a long, cold day of trapping in 40 below weather, those small cabins there were a very warm and welcoming sight. 